Hello everyone, welcome back to GLB Productions. Bruno Luce here, thanks for joining me. We're in the workshop today, so please bear with any noises that you may hear in the background. Now in this video, we're going to look at how to wire BS1363 plugs and sockets. These are also known as British type or 13 amp. Now these are used in the UK, Ireland, Cyprus, Malta, Malaysia, and of course where I am here in Singapore. They're the most common AC plugs and sockets that are used in sound reinforcement for single phase distribution, especially on stage. And today we're going to be using the socket as well as the plug from a British company called Permaplug. And I like using these because they're very rugged and they have proven themselves in the past. So before we begin this video, I got to give you a disclaimer, and that is to always follow all of your local electrical laws and regulations and never work on live electrical circuits. If you are at all unsure about what you're doing, please contact a licensed electrician to do the work for you. It is not worth screwing around with AC power. So that being said, let's get on to today's video. So the first step in our process is to choose and prepare the AC wire or cabling that you're going to use. Uh, today we're going to be using 3 by 1.25 square millimeter or 16.5 American wire gauge stranded copper AC cabling. Uh, this, as you can see here, has the standard three internal connectors. It has one brown, one green and yellow, and one blue. This is the gauge that is recommended by the manufacturer of these plugs and sockets, as can be seen by a small diagram on the back. The thickness that you need will depend on how long your run is, as well as what kind of amperage you're using. Today we're dealing with no more than 13 amps, so this is the gauge that we've chosen. The next step is to prepare the ends of the wire, right? Now, the key to getting this right is to follow the manufacturer's recommendations. All quality plugs and sockets will come with a diagram that shows how the wire ends are to be prepared and it's important to follow this as closely as you can as it will tell you how much of the outer jacket to strip off as well as how much to strip off on the individual wire ends. Following this will give you the correct cable routing within the plug or socket and it will also minimize the chance of the cable coming loose during normal use because it will ensure that the strain relief is clamped on the outer jacket and not on the inside individual conductors. When stripping the outer insulation, my preference is to use a thin cutting blade. Uh, you might use a wire stripper or some other tool, but the key is when you cut through the outer insulation, which is gray in this case, it's very important not to cut through the inside insulation because that will compromise the electrical integrity of the connection. When stripping the inner conductors, uh, my preference is to use a tool like this. Once again, use what works for you. But when you strip off the inner insulation, you want to be sure that you do not damage any of the individual copper strands. The other thing that I've done for many years is I tin the bare copper ends. And what this is, is basically taking a soldering iron and just coating these with a small amount of solder so that it holds them together and it prevents them from fraying and it also prevents individual strands from being crushed and severed by the terminal clamping screws when you insert them into the plug or socket. So now that you've prepared your wire ends, let's install the plug and socket. I prefer to install the plug first because if you install the socket, it makes the wire 
very difficult to handle. So in the case of this particular plug, you can see that it has a central clamping screw there, which is for the body of the plug, and it has two silver screws down there, which are used for the cable strain relief. So if we remove the central screw here, we can take the back of the plug off, and you can see that as with all British Standard plugs, there is a fuse in the plug itself. Now, in the case of the socket that we're using, you can see that the socket itself is also fused. So this is a bit like belt and braces protection. It's not strictly necessary, but the reason that these sockets are fused is so that they can be installed where there is no fused plug, right? So on something that is coming straight off of a breaker and you still have your 13 amp fuse protection there. So what I like to do with these is I like to remove the strain relief completely first. So we'll undo our screws here. And I will completely take the, the strain relief, which is this plastic piece, I will remove this completely and I will reinstall it the other way around. I'll show you this later. All right, now that we've got the camera uh, pointed down so that you can have a better view of what I'm doing, you can see that within this plug, there are three terminals. The one at the top is earth, the one nearest, the fuse here is live, and the other one is neutral. There's also a cable a ramp or chute, and you can see the grooves at the bottom there which are for the strain relief. So we take our prepared cable and the first thing that I'll do is I will use my standard screwdriver here to loosen the terminals and I'll loosen the terminal screws, not all the way, just enough that they clear the um, they clear the hole in the pin itself, right? So you can see there, you can see through. Then I will take my cable and I've always found it a real help to have a pair of needle nose pliers with which you can feed the wire into the individual terminals there. So I tend to start with the live. So as you can see there, I'll pop that out and then I will take this and install that first. The live is intentionally the most difficult one to do, which is why I lift it up out of the terminal block itself. All right, now, so there is our live conductor installed. The next one that we're gonna install is our neutral. And with our needle nose pliers, we're going to bend this around and insert it into this terminal. Right, there is our neutral installed. And finally, we're gonna install our earth. So there's our plug wired. Now you'll notice a couple of things. You'll notice that there is some slack in the earth. And the reason for this is that if for some reason the strain relief here is compromised, the first thing that will pull out is the live connection. And this is important for safety. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to wait a while and then we are going to retighten these three screws. When you first install the wires, you tighten only hand tight. After that, you wait a minute and then you re-tighten. It's very important not to over tighten these screws because what will happen is that you may crush the uh, conductor and you will then have a loose piece floating around within the body of the plug itself. All right, now we're gonna install our strain relief. Now the strain relief, as you can see here, 
is a small sort of, um, looks a bit like a little bridge and it comes this way. I always take these out and I flip them around and I install them the other way around like this so that again, it doesn't overly crush the outer jacket. Note that the strain relief must be installed on the outer jacket, not on the individual inner strands. This is really, really important. I see far, far too many of these plugs where you can actually see the individual strands hanging out of the plug that is absolutely forbidden in my company. So let's do that now. Now, getting this started can be a bit difficult because you have to insert the screws from the back and uh, with your screwdriver, you have to sort of catch the, catch the strain relief on the front and then you do the other side. Right, you can see where we are there. Now in terms of how much to tighten the strain relief screws, again, remember not to over tighten anything, right? Now, if you can see there, there's a, there's a, it has just slightly flattened the, in the uh, outer jacket here and that is quite enough, all right? There's no need to crank it down super tight. If you're unsure, just give it a pull and see if it comes out, right? It shouldn't shift at all. So that, is your plug now completely wired. Go back around with your normal screwdriver and just tighten up the terminals one last time. And then you're good to install the outer cover. Install the main body clamping screw there. And we're good to go. Now let's install the socket. All right, now this socket from Perma Plug, as I mentioned, it has its own internal 13 amp fuse. It also has an indicator light there which tells you when the socket is energized. One of the other reasons that I really like this is that as you can see, there are no individual switches on any of the outlets. And this is really important because I've seen those individual switches cause a huge amount of problems. People will plug in and then they'll forget to turn them on. They'll get turned off accidentally in the middle of a show and they're just another source of potential failure. So for live sound, I always say no individual switches. When you plug it in, it's on. When you unplug it, it's off. On the back of this socket, you can see there are two screws here, which we will need to remove in order to remove the access panel to the terminals. So once again, get our screwdriver, take these off. Now, when you remove this, there'll be a small piece of paper inside this is the wiring diagram. Now, obviously, if you're doing a whole bunch like we are today, you only need one of these. And the inside of the socket, as you can see there, it's got the three terminals here and the same type of strain relief there. So as previous, I like to completely remove the strain relief when wiring the terminals. Um, the strain relief in the case of this is completely flat, as you can see there, right? Um, it doesn't, it's not reversible as the other one is. Okay, so we have our three terminals within the body of the socket itself. Once again, we're going to loosen the clamping screws until the entryway is completely clear. Okay, so we've got our terminal screws loosened there. You'll notice that I'm using a screwdriver with a relatively small handle for this. I like to do this because it stops me from over torquing these fasteners. They're very soft brass and they have a tendency to strip quite easily. Obviously they're brass because it improves the electrical conductivity, but they are soft, so you have to be careful. Now we're going to take the prepared end of our cable and we're going to use our needle nose pliers once again to feed that into the socket itself. So 
So there you can see our plug, our routing within the socket itself. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is that with this routing, it actually obscures where the strain relief goes, which is here. So what you have to do is you just have to push this in until, as you can see there, you have to push it in until the outer jacket lies over the strain relief. Right? Now, this is not an error. This is actually how the manufacturer intends, and it, it, they intend that there be some slack within the plug itself. At this point, we can install our strain relief. And there's our strain relief installed. So once again, we'll check that everything is nice and tight and then we will replace our back plate. So there is our socket completed. Now, before you pronounce your work good, it's really important to check your work. So what you would do is you would plug this in to an electrical outlet, turn on, check that your LED lights up, obviously, and then you need to use something like this socket tester to ensure that you have not swapped around something within. So you plug it in and you can see you have three lights there. If you don't, something is wrong. Disconnect from the power supply, check your work and make sure that it's correct. Remember, with electricity, there is absolutely no room for errors. So everyone, that's how you wire 13 amp plugs and sockets. One thing that I didn't talk about in the video itself was whether to use Loctite on the terminal screws. Uh, I did for many years, but then I had an incident happen where the Loctite actually reacted with the plastic of some brand of socket that I was using and it actually caused it to disintegrate. Uh, not this brand, some other brand. So since then, I've stopped using Loctite on the inside of my AC plugs and sockets. Um, I find that as long as you do the two-stage tightening method that I outlined, meaning hand tight, wait a minute, tighten again, uh, I've never had any of these terminal screws come undone. The tinning also really helps because it increases the resistance when you do the final tightening because of the way that the solder binds the individual wires together. So that's how you wire 13 amp plugs and sockets. I hope this video has been useful to you. Uh, do please consider visiting my Patreon page if you like these videos and you like to support the channel. Until next time, this is Bruno Luce with GLB Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.